What's up guys? Today we have another Thunder Laser video with you and we are finally setting up our camera. We've been working with the Thunder Laser machine now for a few months and never got the camera set up. I honestly didn't think that it was really going to make that much of a difference in our projects, but now that we do have it set up, I am kicking myself for not doing it sooner. It is such a handy accessory to have and it makes things like engraving that much easier on the machine. Having this camera installed literally opened up an entirely new world of possibilities with everything that the Thunder can do. It is a serious game changer. So let's get right into it. So this is the little box the camera and everything that you need comes in. It's minimal and right to the point so there is no confusion. I love that. So besides the camera, you get this USB cable. Unfortunately, this particular one that was sent out didn't work for us because it was too short. So we grabbed another one from Amazon. As you can see, there is at least five feet between the laser and the computer in the workshop. So this was absolutely necessary. You also get this adapter piece that connects the camera cable to the cable attached to the laser. The camera also comes with these little adhesive tabs that will help secure the cable to the machine. And here are the zip ties for that as well. All right, the first thing we did was tape up the camera. From what we heard, once you take the adhesive off the back of the camera and adhere it to the machine, it's set and nearly impossible to remove. You need to attach the adhesive tabs to the machine. Just place them relatively equal space and ran them along the side of the camera and down the edges of the machine. You'll need to connect the cable to the camera, then run the cord to the adhesive tabs. We wanted to make sure everything was nice, taut, and secure with minimal sagging or gaps. And then each one was secured with a zip tie. We also placed two tabs along the right side of the laser machine just to keep the cables completely out of the way. Each of the zip ties was trimmed and then we ran the rest of the cable through the little port in the right corner of the Thunder laser machine. Next it was time to connect the laser to the computer. All you need to do is use the little key that the Thunder laser machine came with and access the side panel. Just to the left of the board, you'll locate the cable you just ran through the port. You need to grab the adapter piece that the Thunder camera came with. Disconnect the beige cable that's in the center, connect one end to the adapter, then plug in the camera cable you just pulled through the port. This is how it should look. Next thing we need to do is connect the laser to the computer. Just plug the USB cord that the camera came with or a longer one like we had to get and plug it into the laptop or your computer. Now we just need to get the camera set up in Lightburn, which is the program that runs the laser. When you open Lightburn, go to Laser Tools in the top menu, then Calibrate Camera Lens. When the little screen pops up, you should see an option for your Thunder camera. Then in the next drop down menu, we use the 110 option based on our specific machine which is the 51100. The numbers we use were solely based on the test cards that we did when we first got the machine. If you happen to miss that video, I'm gonna go ahead and link it just above. We forgot to add the material thickness into these values, so when you are setting up your camera, just make sure that you put those in properly. And if you haven't run any test cards on your machine, you need to get on that ASAP. It is a huge game changer and will end up saving you a ton of money in the long run, because you're not wasting any material. You're going to know exactly what your settings are for engraving, uh, scoring lines, or cutting. Then you're going to click start. Then the machine will start running the camera setup project on the laser. It will go through each of the targets and numbers. Once it's done running, you'll go back into Lightburn and the camera alignment wizard and click capture image. And I just wanna take a very brief pause here just to show you the difference once you focus the camera. You can see how blurry the screen is right here, but once we adjusted the camera, we got it focused properly. Do you see the difference? All right, back to the calibration, and this is the last and final step that you're gonna to need to do to get your camera set up. 
Now we just need to place the markers in Lightburn. Zoom in really close on these to make them as accurate as possible. You're just going to click your mouse to mark the center of each target. If you get it wrong or think you can get even more accurate, then just click undo last and redo it. You'll also need to go in order and do one, two, three, four in consecutive order. And just like that, your Thunder Laser camera is all set up. Like I said, it took us a couple of months to get this camera set up and I can't tell you what a game changer it is. Just when I was thinking that we wouldn't need the camera for anything, another possibility pops into my mind. And of course I'm going to share a couple of those ideas with you right now. One of the main uses that we have found to use this camera is for engraving. You just need to put whatever material that you're planning on using into the laser machine, grab your design and bring it into Lightburn, and then let the camera and thunder do their thing. I was looking for a very specific look on these little coasters and wanted to make sure the design extended all the way over the edges. Notice how I also spread the coasters out into random places on the bed of the Thunder Laser just to show how handy the camera really does come in. I just duplicated the design by going to edit, then duplicate, moved that overlay onto the next coaster and then did it again for the last coaster. You can also see I placed a thin piece of wood under the coasters themselves just to avoid any crazy flashbacks since it was engraving beyond the actual coaster. I put the settings in for the engrave, did a preview to make sure it looked accurate, and then hit send. One thing I do want to note really quick here is all of the other projects that we were doing without the camera, we would always set it for user origin. But once you have the camera set up, you're actually going to pick absolute coordinates. This is going to tell the machine that you have a very precise and accurate position that you need it to start. And just like that, we have perfectly engraved coasters. This was actually the very first project we did using the camera and I love how it turned out. Having the camera is really great for things like engraving, but my absolute favorite use for the camera is actually using wood scraps. In the past, we probably would have thrown out a lot of the scraps, but these days, when things are so expensive, we are really holding on to all of the wood that we can and trying to utilize every little inch. If any of our pieces of scrap wood has any kind of space on it, we are going to tend to keep it now, especially that the camera is set up and I see what it can do. So I was working on this custom army flag and my customer really wanted to use walnut. The only walnut that I happened to have here was completely butchered. It had marks and spaces all over it. But instead of running to the lumber yard to grab more wood, I looked at the pieces that I needed to cut and looked at my pieces of wood and realized that I could probably fit everything in using the Thunder camera. So in Lightburn, you'll just turn the camera control on and update the overlay to reflect what's on the bed of the machine. I brought in the stripes of the flag that needed to be cut, then just kind of moved each one around so that it fit properly onto the wood. I changed the settings for the cut and then sent the file right to the laser. Now on the laser control panel, just hit file and locate the project you are running. Hit enter and then you'll see it pop up on the screen. You can also see your settings, which we always like to double check here before running the machine. Hit start and let the thunder go. See how it goes perfectly to the spot you needed to start? So, so awesome. I love watching this thing run. The accuracy is incredible and it is so fast. I think these cuts were done in less than two minutes. We have found a couple of other uses for the camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and save that for another video because I really wanna make sure that I'm highlighting them properly without making any of these videos too long. The bottom line is that having a camera set up on your laser is invaluable. It is a total game changer with the amount of things that you can do with it. Hopefully you found this information helpful. If you yourself have a laser and a camera set up, I would love to know your favorite uses for it. So please go ahead and drop me a comment down below to let me know. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I would absolutely love it if you did it now so that you don't miss another Thunder Laser tutorial. 
DIY project or woodworking project. All right, friends, until next time. Thank you.